Hi folks. Today we are looking at Catherine M. Porter's Pale Horse, Pale Rider. And we are looking at it from the fabric of our own pandemic and looking at Porter's theme, Pandemic as Metaphor. Yes, there are correspondences brought out in the Porter story between yeah, in the total war of World War I and its ravages on society and the ravages of Spanish influenza. Now, let's mention first that amazing opening dream Miranda's dream, one of the things we want to know is that Miranda is very much the author. This is not exact autobiography. This is not nonfiction. This is autobiographical fiction when a female writer uses a character named Miranda. One assumes, first thought, fairly automatically, that that character is representative of the author herself and meant to be. Just as Margaret Fuller used Miranda for herself in her Woman in the 19th Century, Miranda is that. So we have Miranda here, who is Catherine Ann Porter's self, more or less. That opening dream is out of the middle of, well, Miranda's suffering, her deep suffering, hallucinatory period, and all the rest of these things with Spanish flu, influenza. So the first thing in the story we have is the flu, the dream, during it. Second, we have what came before. That transition to the, the flashback doesn't tell you automatically that it's a flashback. It is, though. All of that before is flashback, and it begins with Miranda lucid and with lucid memories, and her thoughts become more erratic as she comes down with the flu become discontinuous. And then in the depths of her illness, we have these discontinuous flashes, these nightmare scenes. We have her repeatedly asking for Adam and being not very convincingly reassured because something has happened to Adam and folks caring for her are not going to tell her that in the middle of her influenza. And then our brief period at the end, a narrator, whoops, not the narrator, sorry, Miranda, wakes to the aftermath, the afterwards, and Miranda is, well, we'll talk about that world briefly when we come to it here. Deliberately leave that off for the moment. Now that opening dream, we have a race with death. We see the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Death, of course, is one. Miranda is riding on the horse pestilence. Spanish influenza of 1918 and 1919 was pestilence. War is raging, but Miranda is not riding that mount. Nor, as it happens, is Adam, even though he's a soldier. We're going to mention that. Uh, for a moment, and famine is the other horse. These all go together. And if she ran the race to the end, she would die. You don't outrace death, it doesn't happen. She breaks off in the race. She returns to this world, the world of the living. World War I, let's talk about it for a moment on its side of the metaphor. Yes, the United States entered World War I in 1917. Woodrow Wilson, for reasons beyond 
the kin of those of us who are sane, decided the U.S. had to throw itself into this massive quagmire of a European conflict. And he demanded, as he entered World War I with the U.S., total commitment. Society 100% into commitment to the war. Anyone who, who questioned the U.S. involvement would be fiercely legally persecuted or extra-legally persecuted. Anyone who seemed insufficiently enthusiastic would be persecuted, the same way that those uh, war bond sellers, those petty two-bit pseudo-patriots took pleasure in uh, tormenting working folk. Buy more bonds! You've got to support the war effort! Bullshit. Now, the flu... Its actual source was likely a hog farm in Kansas. It wasn't Spanish. But it began its spread, and the people, the, those being called up to service the young men clustering together, just provided a perfect environment for its spread. And spread it did. This particular version of flu was lethal, highly lethal, because the body declared total war on the disease pathogens. The immune system uh, reacted to these particular pathogens extraordinarily intensely, would damage healthy tissues, so an infection of the flu in the lungs would result in damage done not just by the flu pathogens, but by antibodies, white blood cells, all the rest of these things made the lungs vulnerable to pneumonia and secondary infections. And perversely, quite unlike most of these influenza type infections, which kill the weakest, the Spanish flu took its greatest toll among the young and the healthy. Just like World War I killed the young, the soldiers, the flu killed off the young. Worldwide, that flu killed between 50 and 100 million people in uh, 1918 and 1919, so severe that uh, it temporarily brought the fighting in World War I at the trenches to a halt because so many soldiers on both sides were ill. And it may have been an instrumental in bringing that pointless quagmire, that, uh, oh boy, that disastrous muck of World War I to an end. Protagonist, Miranda, comes out of her fever the day the war ends. Porter is offering that metaphor, establishing it there. She returns to life the day the war or is over the day that the world returns to life. Repercussions? Well, the world outside is celebrating. She is just waking up, and those around her are celebrating. She doesn't feel much like celebrating. She's left a shell of herself, like that pained and wounded world. She doesn't know it yet, but she has lost. The one who was dear to her, the one reason she wanted back into this world. Her boyfriend, Adam, died of the flu. Likewise, the world has lost so many, that flu, in World War I. She, as she asks for clothing and such to return to the world, plain stuff and gray, she returns to the world like a living ghost, because, well, functionally, in the story and in the way such things happen, she is the one left to tell the story. Someone has to be left to tell the story, and Miranda is there to tell 
how everyone dear to her has died. So Porter's account of the Spanish flu and Miranda's infection is thus, well, autobiographical fiction again. Miranda is very much Porter in this. The experiences are very much those Porter experienced. But also a metaphoric account of total war. The flu destroys the body in so much the same way as war destroys society. And this particular version of the flu, this 1918 epidemic version, creates an internal self-destructive overcommitment, just as Wilson did his best to destroy freedom in the United States with his overcommitment, his obsession, his commitment to total war. And that is Pale Horse, Pale Rider, folks.